Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to solve some examples for the uh, Bernoulli equation uh, and also define some specific uh, kind of problems for that can be solved using these uh, um, Bernoulli equations, such as the slice gates and also crested weirs. Okay. Uh, so the first example I want to solve is related to this stagnation point concept that we learned before. So the example asks us determine the pressure at the stagnation point P2 and the pressure difference indicated by the static by the heated static tube okay so imagine we have an airplane here and then the air moves from blows or wind uh, blows from point one to point two okay these are the given information of this problem the density of the air is given as this and also 0.001756 slug per foot cube and P1, the pressure at point 1 is given as 1450 pound per foot square okay also one of the other things that is given is the velocity at point 1 which is 300 foot per second and now the problem wants us to find the pressure at this stagnation point and also the pressure difference that is indicated by the p to the static tube right so um, this is going to be it's going to be p2 minus p1 as we learned here okay so either we can use this static tube formula that we learned here or we can just start with the uh, pressure form of the Bernoulli equation so I want to start with the pressure form of the uh, Bernoulli equation, which is shown here, okay, and write it for this uh, problem. Oh, let me see what's going on. Okay. So. Let's write the uh, pressure form of Bernoulli equation. And we know from point one and two, we don't have any elevation difference from this uh, configuration that is shown. So, so Z1 equals to Z2, and I don't need to write this rho GZ term here, okay? So I can neglect it because it's gonna cancel out from both sides of the equation or equality when I write it down, okay? So, I have P1 plus rho V1 square over 2 equals to P2 plus rho V2 square over 2, okay? And because we know here we have a, we have a stagnation point, so at the stagnation point, the velocity should be 0, right? So I can say that V at 2 is 0, and then this term is going to become 0. So pressure at point 2 can be found as the sum of the static pressure, which is P1, is given here. It's going to be 1450 pound per foot, cube, foot uh, square, plus the dynamic pressure, which is this one, 
rho v1 square over 2, rho is given, so I just write it down, 0 0.00756 slug per foot cube times v1 square, so v1 is given here, 300 foot per second, 300 square, foot square, second square, times one half, right? This one half here. So if you calculate it, you're gonna get 1,500, 29 pound per foot square and this is the absolute pressure right this is not the relative pressure because why because we also have the we have also calculated p1 right and that is the atmospheric pressure we have added that so this is going to be an absolute pressure So the pressure difference, which is the second part of the, uh, the question, the pressure difference by the peated static tube or gauge pressure, we also call this gauge pressure, right? And this is not the absolute pressure, this is the gauge pressure. And this is what the periodic static tube uh, feels is P2 minus P1, which equals to the dynamic pressure, rho V1 square over 2, which equals to 79 pounds per foot square. Okay, so this is this pressure that the periodostatic tube uh, found. And this was an example for um, where we use this uh, British system units, okay? So this was a very simple uh, example for uh, finding the stagnation pressure. And now I want to talk about uh, some other applications of this Bernoulli equation, and one is on free jets. Okay, let's see what do I mean by this. So imagine we have this free jet here, this kind of configuration. So if you apply Bernoulli, so apply Bernoulli to the streamline between, let me put it a little bit here, point one and two. Okay, if you apply Bernoulli to the streamline between point one and two, which is between this point and this point, okay, to this streamline that is going from here to here, what's, what will we get? Okay, I wanna, I wanna uh, find it out. So here, as you see, we have a free jet. So we have some water, say some water that is filled here, okay. Or it can be any fluid, but maybe just assume it's just some water. And then 
this we have a jet at the bottom we have some leakage or something that uh, at the bottom and then I want to find the velocity at the bottom so let's apply Bernoulli equation to find some relationships here so I can write P1 in the, the pressure form of uh, the pressure form of the uh, Bernoulli equation plus one rho one half of rho v1 square plus rho gz1 equals to p2 plus one half rho v2 square plus rho gz2 okay so now let's make some assumptions first of all as you see the point one here is in the vicinity of the atmosphere right so the pressure of here this point is just the atmospheric pressure because it's on this free surface right free surface of water or this uh, um, any fluid that is here right so if we just assume we have a gauge pressure we can assume that this pressure is zero so gauge in terms of gauge pressure this pressure is going to be zero all right where we have the atmospheric reference pressure okay how about here point two as you see point two point two is also if you see it here let me show it with another color it's also in the vicinity of air here, right? So here is air. And so the pressure of point two, because you have air here, is going to be also equal to the atmospheric pressure or P naught, or in term, if we write it in terms of the gauge pressure, it's going to be zero, right? So again, zero because we are in the free atmosphere. Okay. So these two pressures are going to cancel out. And then if we, if our coordinate system is from here, so this is Z, then z of, of 2 is going to be 0, right? So I can just write it down here. As you see, z2 is 0. And z1 is going to be h, right? This is what is given here in the problem. So z2 is going to be 0. And z1 is going to be h. OK. So now I want to make another assumption. And the assumption is, assume the reservoir is very large. Okay, so if the reservoir is very large and this D is a small, okay, we can we can assume that the velocity of this is the velocity that v1 is going down is much smaller than velocity at point two right so to be specific i can write something uh, that kind of uh, shows this so say we know that the discharge between point one and point two should be equal that means how much water is going out here this this water should also go down right so i can write that and this is something we are going to investigate later v1 times a1 equals to v2 times a2 okay and because a1 is much larger than A2, I can say that V1 should be much smaller than V2, okay? 
So because V1 should be much smaller than V2, I can say that, I can assume that V1 is almost equal to zero, okay? So if I make this assumption, then the Bernoulli equation reduces to this. The Bernoulli equation, this term is gonna be also almost zero. So I can write down rho gh equals to one half rho v2 square. And thus, this gives me, these rows are gonna also cancel out So what we are going to get is V2 equals to square root of 2GH. So this is very interesting because you could also get this relation from, for example, a free-falling object from your uh, kinematics uh, or physics because this shows that the velocity at here is a function of h here and also the gravity the gravity force right so it's a gravity that kind of drives this flow down and so the velocity should be dependent on gravity and also the height of the fluid that is on top of that okay so this is very similar to the formula that you can get from your kinematics um, and physics right and so with these assumptions that the reservoir is large we were able to also get a very similar formula using the Bernoulli equation and this shows the consistency uh, among these uh, formulas, okay? So this is one application of Bernoulli equation where we are able to, uh, we were able to uh, approximate the V at the outlet of these free jets, the velocity based on this height of this uh, reservoir here, okay? So this shows that this uh, Bernoulli equation is very useful. And now let me show you another example that we can use this Bernoulli equation, and that is for confined flows. So imagine we have these two, this flow here. So we have two kind of uh, planes here and the fluid that is moving along these two planes. Okay, so it has a velocity V1 at this point, and then a velocity V2 at this point, okay? So, I can write the mass flow rate from an outlet. So the mass flow rate from an outlet as m dot equals to, this is the mass rate, right? The mass flow rate is gonna be rho q and q is the volume flow rate. So q is me, uh, meter cube per second, which is the volume flow rate and by rate means per second right per time per each uh, unit of time and this is the volume that is going out at each time this we call q or sometimes we call it discharge okay and the mass flow rate is just density times the volume 
then you are going to get the mass flow rate. This means how, how much, for example, kilogram uh, or slug it's going out, right? So that is uh, the mass per second or it's going out from this confined flow, right? That is from an outlet or it comes in to this uh, as an in the inlet, okay? And A is the cross-sectional area here between for these two, say, planes, cross-sectional area. And so we can write Q or discharge, which I also wrote, wrote it here down, equals to VA. By VA means the velocity times the area. What is velocity? It's going to be A times velocity. I can write it as delta X over delta T, right? Let me write it down this way. So I can write it as A times V, where velocity is delta X over delta T. And so if you look at this one, it's going to be what? It's going to be volume. A times delta X is volume over delta T, right? So this is the, exactly the definition of volume rate, flow rate, because it means volume per time, which shows the volume flow rate, right? So I can write Q or the volume flow rate as A times V, the area times uh, the velocity, okay? So the mass conservation here between this point, this point and this point states, we can write the mass conservation. And what, that, what does that mean? That means the flow that is coming in, that much flow mass, the mass that comes in, that, that much mass should also go out, right? So this, this is the mass conservation. Okay, so if you write the mass conservation, this tells us that m dot, the mass flow rate at point 1, should equal to the mass flow rate at point 2. Okay, so now I just write down the definitions again. So instead of mass flow rate is going I'm going to write rho q and instead of q I just want to write av so I going to get rho v1 a equals to rho v2 a okay and so these two a's are going to cancel out these two rows are going to cancel out so I am left with, and this is A1 and this is A2, the continuity equation, which we call it continuity equation for incompressible one-dimensional flows is states that A1, V1, should equal to A2, V2, or Q1 should equal to Q2. That is, volume flow rate at point 1 and point 2 should equal to each other. And this is what we call continuity equation for incompressible one-dimensional flows, which comes from this mass conservation law, okay? And so that was what I used here to make that approximation, okay? And this is, we use it a lot use this a lot um, because this is very useful in addition to the Bernoulli equation we use this kind of continuity equation to be able to solve more uh, to kind of uh, solve more examples and so make some approximations like this here so this is what I used uh, from this from this uh, continuity equation okay so I just wanted to show the derivation here for all the com for confined flows that we can use this kind of uh, 
equation or continuity equation mass or mass conservation which is very commonly used okay so now let's go and solve one more example for Bernoulli equation so example So imagine we have this reservoir, then we say we have some water that comes here to this reservoir, and then it goes out from the other side, okay, from here. Pretty small reservoir, it's only 0.2 meter. Okay. So the question asks us determine the flow rate Q from the bottom from the bottle into the cooler so uh, imagine this is like a cooler if the depth of beverage in the cooler is to remain constant at h equals to 0.2 meter so we want to find the q or the flow rate from this bottle to this cooler, so say this is a cooler, okay? If the depth of the beverage in the cooler is to remain constant at h equals to 0.2 meter. So say we kind of uh, pour this bottle into this cooler somehow that this height of this uh, cooler the depth of beverage in this cooler kind of remains constant at 0.2 okay and now i want to find what is gonna be what is the flow rate here from this bottle to this cooler and we know the d or the diameter of this cooler is 0.2 meter and also the diameter of the exit is 0.01 meter okay so let's get started to solve this using using the Bernoulli equation okay so first I write a Bernoulli equation between point I want to write between point one and two okay so for a steady for a steady in visit incompressible flow the Bernoulli equation between point one and two becomes as follows so it's gonna be P1 the pressure form of Bernoulli equation plus one half rho v1 square plus rho g z1 equals to p2 plus one half 
rho v2 square plus rho gz2. Okay. So, again, I'm going to get my coordinate system z from here, from point 2. So this is going to be Z. So Z2 is going to be 0. And Z1 is going to be H. Right? So also, you see that P at 1 and two, both of them are in the vicinity of the atmosphere, so I can just assume the pressure at, po at point one and also at point two, which also is uh, the vicinity of the atmosphere, is just equal to the atmospheric pressure, or if you write the equations in terms of gauge pressure, they are gonna be what? They are gonna be zero. So with the assumption P1 equals to P2 equals to 0 and Z1 equals to H and Z0 equals to Z two equals to 0 This equation becomes as follows. So P's are going to go out, and then I have 1 rho V1 square plus rho GH equals to 1 half of rho V2 square. And rows are going to also cancel out. So I'm just I just have one half e one square plus g h equals to one half v two square. Okay. So one thing I wanted to know that the problem sometimes might not give us this one and two, these points and these streamlines, and these are the things you have to assume yourself. So it might just give us this geometry and then wants us to solve the equations. Okay, so in that case, you just, you have to find a streamline. So for example, this would be one streamline. And then you write 1.1 1, 1 and 2, you write the Bernoulli equation between those points, okay? But here it is given, but sometimes I, I, I said that it might not be given, right? So you have to write it yourself. You have to find the streamlines yourself, okay? So, another point I wanna make is you have V1 here, okay? And the reason is although the liquid level remains constant, which is H equals to a constant, there is an average velocity v1 because of the flow from bottle right
So because of this flow from bottle here, there might be some velocity here, okay? Some average velocity here. Although the edge is kind of kept constant, but because this just continuously goes down, there might be some velocity here, and then there might be also, and there, there is also a velocity at point two for sure, right? So that's why I don't, we don't assume that the uh, V1 is zero because we also have some inflow here that might add some velocity to the, to the tank, okay? So the other equation, so this is, we just wrote this down, okay? And what we wanted to find is Q, but we have, we have, we know H, but we don't know V1 and V2. So we have two unknowns and one equation. So we need one more equation, and that is we are gonna use this continuity equation, okay? In a lot of these of Bernoulli mm -hmm. equations, you need to use the second equation, and that is continuity equation, okay? To be able to close your problem, to close your equations. So the continuity, I write the continuity between point one and point two, or mass conservation between these two points, right? And that means that the mass of the flow that comes into this container, how much it comes in, it should go out, right? So that is what I'm gonna write. That is Q1, the mass, the volume flow rate that comes in should go also out. The mass, um, the mass flow rate also, first mass conservation says the mass flow rate should come, that comes in should go out. And because the density is constant, I can judge for this flow, it's not changing. I can just say that the volume flow rate that comes in should go out, right? And so Q1 should equal to Q2. So I can write mass conservation So the mass conservation states that Q1 should equal to Q2. And so A1, V1 should equal to A2, V2. And so for this, A1, what is A1? It's a, it's a cylinder, so it's a circle here. So it should be, A1 should be PD square over four, and A2 should be P small d, which is this d, square over four, right? So it's the area of the circle. So I'm just gonna write it down. So this means p d square over four times v1 equals to pi d square, small d square over four times v2. So, these pi's are going to cancel out, and 4 is going to also cancel out. So, I have, from the mass conservation, I can say that V1 should equal to d over, small d over big D square times V2. Okay? And so now we have a relation between V1 and V2, so we can just substitute this into Bernoulli equation. So combine with Bernoulli. We get, so instead of V1, I'm just gonna write D over D square. So I have one half of, Instead of V is one square, I'm just gonna write D over D four V two square plus one half
and I'm going to take it to the left hand side. So I have, I'm going to put it into here. So I, I will first write one, we have v2 square. one half v2 square minus this equals to gh right so i took this to the left hand side to, to the right hand side of this equation and so i then i factor v2 square and this gives you 1 minus d over d to power 4 equals to 2gh okay so then v2 is going to be square root of 2gh over 1 minus d over d to the power 4. Okay? Which equals to I just uh, substitute all the numbers that I have. Instead of h is uh, 0.2 meter, so let's just substitute all the numbers and plug into this equation. So 2 times 9.81 meter per second square, h is 0.2 meter. over 1 minus small d is going to be 0 0.01 meter over big D which is 0 0.2 meter and the whole thing to power 4 equals to 1 point 98 meter per second and the question wants what it wants the flow rate q from us so q is gonna be a1 times v1 which equals to a2 times v2 which equals to and this is v1 which is V of here. So I have to multiply it by the, its corresponding A, which is gonna be P over four. Oh, uh, sorry, this one is V2. This one is V2 that I found, right? This is V2. So I just uh, multiply it by uh, small d square, which is 0 .00, 0 0.01 meter over 4 to get the area, right? So it's going to be p over 4 of d. What is d? d is 0 0.01 meter square times 1.98 meter per second is going to be 1 Point fifty six times ten to the minus four meter cube per second is the volume flow rate for this question. So this means the only way you can keep edge constant at point two for this problem is if your Q or the flow rate that you are kind of flowing this bottle into or from another tank or this bottle into this 
uh, cooler is only possible if the fluoride that you are kind of uh, pouring this water into this is equal to 1.56 times 10 to the minus 4 meter cube per second. Okay, so if you add more with a higher volume fluorate, then the edge is going to increase. And if you add less than this, a, Q, a, 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 a less than fl a smaller fluorate than this, H is going to decrease. Okay, so the only way that H is going to be constant here and equal to 0.2 meter is if for this configuration where we have this big D and small D of 0.2 meter and 0.01 uh, meter is if Q or the volume flow rate from here should equal to 1.56 times 10 to the minus 4 meter cube per second. Okay? So in the next session, I'm going to solve some more examples of this uh, Bernoulli equation. So, so far, just have a, let's have a brief overview of what we learned. So, we talked about uh, free jets. So, we just applied the Bernoulli equation for a free jet that is shown here. And the final velocity that we found was square root of 2gh that we said we can also find it from kinematics. And then for confined flows, we define the mass conservation. That means the mass flow rate that goes uh, into any confined uh, configuration should equal to the mass of the flow that goes out, the mass rate of the flow that goes out. And because the densities are equal, we found the continuity equation for incompressible 1D flows, which states that A1 times V1 should equal to A2 times V2, or the volume flow rate Q, Q1 should equal to volume flow rate Q, Q2. And we said that we, we will use this a lot along with the uh, Bernoulli equation. This is an additional equation that we can use along with the Bernoulli equation to be able to solve these problems. So then I saw one example where we had this mass flow rate here that was coming into this cooler and then was going out. So we use both Bernoulli equation and then the, uh, this continuity equation to be able to solve and find the flow rate in order to keep the uh, depths of the flow here constant as it comes in, okay? And in these problems, if they sometimes, as I said, they might not give you these uh, points like one and two, so you need to uh, uh, find a streamline yourself and then write the Bernoulli equation and continuity equation for those points. And also note, because V2 and at point two and point one, we are in the vicinity of the air or at atmosphere, so the we can assume, uh, we said, gauge pressure, we have gauge pressure and the uh, pressure we, that we are kind of considering is gauge pressure and remove the atmospheric pressure so P1 equal, equal to P2 equals to zero and then the Z for disease you need to uh, consider a, a coordinate system that we found here, uh, we just showed here And then you can write the Bernoulli equation and using the mass conservation equation, you can find uh, this relation for V2 for this problem. And then just plug it into the numbers, you're gonna get this V2 here. And finally, by multiplying V times A2, we get the volume flow rate here, which is 1.56 times 10 to the minus four meter cube per second.